Greetings and welcome. Let us learn the construction and working of Babcock and Wilcox boiler. This is a 3D model of Babcock and Wilcox boiler. But this is not the exact replica of the Babcock and Wilcox boiler. But I think this is enough for understanding the construction and working principles. All the parts of this boiler except the chimney and upper part of the steam drum are enclosed by fire bricks or refractory walls for heat insulation to decrease the loss of heat to the surrounding because the refractory walls or fire bricks are good insulator of heat and these materials have very good heat resistant properties. These are some inspection doors for inspection of the parts inside the combustion chamber. These inspection doors are on the refractory walls. These inspection doors can be opened even when the boiler is in operation. The cylindrical drum at the top is called the steam and water drum, which is occupied by both steam and water. And most of the mountings are attached to this steam and water drum. This red colored pipe is the steam stop valve which regulates the flow of steam uh, in case it is superheated steam to the turbine and the superheater is situated inside the combustion chamber that we will see after some time. Now let us look at the safety valve. This is the safety valve and this safety valve releases the steam if the pressure inside the boiler exceeds the working pressure of the boiler. Now the pressure goes. This is the pressure gauge through which the pressure can be monitored and accordingly the decision can be taken. This is pressure gauge. There may be two pressure gauges and also there are water level indicator which indicates level of water inside the boiler. The vertical tube of the water level indicator is transparent. Water level inside the boiler can be uh, monitored with by watching this water level indicator. There may be two water level indicators on both sides of the drum. So this is one in water level indicator and this is another water level indicator. Now this is the manhole which is open at present. So manhole is the opening on the steam drum through which a man can enter into the steam drum for inspection, repairing or cleaning purpose. And this manhole is closed by one cover plate. This is the cover plate of the manhole. And this one, this is the feed check bulb through which feed water is pumped inside the boiler and in this case it is pumped inside the water and steam drum and for that we need one feed pump that is not shown in this diagram in this model and there is one smoke box and smoke box is the box where hot combustion gases are collected and from the smoke box flue gases or the smokes are discharged to the atmosphere through a chimney. So this is smoke box and above the smoke box that is the chimney. And this one is, this is the grate placed inside the furnace. The grate is the platform for keeping the fuel for burning. Now let us see the parts inside the brick walls. 
Here you can see inside the brick walls there is one grate and there are the water tubes. These water tubes connects the uptake header and downtake headers. And again the uptake header is connected to the steam drum. Downtake header is also connected to the steam drum by two pipes. One is short pipe and, uh, and the other is the long pipe. And this one is the fusible plug which is located above the furnace. So this is the basic structure which works as the support for the steam drum and also for the water tubes and the headers, the uptake header and the downtake headers. So this is the walls at the other side of the boiler and these two pillars may support the water tubes and also the uptake and downtake headers. These are two headers, this one and this one two headers and the left header is also known as the uptake header and the right one is called the downtake header. Both the headers are connected by some water tubes. So water may flow from downtake header to uptake header. So this is the steam drum above the water tubes and headers. But these two headers, uptake header and the downtake header has to be connected to the steam drum by two pipes. Let us see how it is connected. You can see this is a short pipe connecting the uptake header with the steam drum. The steam or hot water goes up to the drum through this short pipe and this short pipe is also known as the riser. That means the hot water or steam rises up to the steam and water drum from the uptake header and cold water or water comes down to the downtake header through another pipe. So this is another pipe which is longer than the previous one and cold water or water from the, the cold water from the steam drum comes down to the downtake header through this long pipe and thereby a convective current is established like this. That means hot water or steam goes up to the drum through the short pipe or riser from the uptake header and cold water comes down to the downtake header and the same water then flows towards the uptake header because of this convective current and this is called natural circulation. Babcock and Wilcox boiler is a natural circulation boiler. You can see the many water tubes connecting the uptake and downtake header. So this way the water circuit is completed. So water inside the tubes, inside the uptake and downtake headers or inside the steam drum is heated by the hot gases which is produced by burning the fuel in the furnace. Now let us see the furnace. Now this is the grate on which the coal is placed for burning. Coal is placed through this fire door and the air or oxygen required for the combustion enters into the furnace through these openings. And these openings are also useful for settling down of the S at the bottom of the grate. So grate is a platform on which the fuel or solid fuel is placed and the S will be settled at the bottom of the grate which can be removed from time to time. So if we place the fuel in on the platform that means on the grate and if we burn that then hot gas or product of combustion expands and it will move upwards. Uh, let me show another thing that is called the baffles. This is one of the baffle which obstruct this one also act as a baffle and as well as this one. So we can say there are three baffles in this case. 
so this baffles are the obstruction to the flow of hot combustion gases flow gases will escape through this door to the smoke box and ultimately to the chimney to be discharged to the atmosphere so once the fuel is burned the hot gas expands and it will move up like this and then come down then again goes up again come down and it will be discharged to the smoke box and then to the chimney and ultimately to the atmosphere so due to this obstruction or baffle plates hot gases or flue gases passes in a zigzag way from the furnace from the furnace to the smoke box and then to the chimney and due to this the hot gases are retained for longer period of time so that the water tubes can absorb maximum amount of heat from the hot gases so for efficient heat transfer or giving more time for the heat transfer the zigzag path is ensured by placing the baffles or obstruction in the path of flow of the hot gases from furnace to the chimney let us see the smoke box now the hot gas enters into the smoke box while exiting from the combustion chamber and above the smoke box there should be one chimney through which the hot gases or smokes are discharged to the atmosphere at a certain height for dispersion of the pollutant the flow of hot gases or flue gases to the smoke box can be regulated by one plate that is called a damper let us see how the damper works so this is the damper the damper is controlled by one chain it can be open or closed this part can be closed or opened now let us understand if the damper is in open position that means the part is in open position then flue gas can pass to the smoke box and ultimately to the chimney so there will be continuous discharge of the flue gases to the atmosphere therefore the fresh air will keep on entering into the furnace through these openings on the grate so that way the sufficient supply of oxygen or air is ensured but if we close this door or damper then the hot gases or flue gases cannot escape to the smoke box or chimney so the fresh air cannot enter into the furnace therefore the combustion of the fuel will decrease or ultimately it will stop so the combustion will stop due to the absence of oxygen or supply of oxygen inside the furnace that way the combustion will stop now if this damper is say half open the combustion gases will escape to the atmosphere at a lower rate the supply of air to the furnace is regulated that means decreases and because of that the combustion rate will be less and if the combustion of fuel is less that means less amount of heat will be produced inside the furnace and if the heat produced is less that means rate of production of steam will decrease and if the rate of steam production has to be increased then this damper has to be open the hot gases or flue gases will easily escape to the smoke box and then to the chimney and atmosphere fresh air will keep on entering into the furnace at a higher rate rate of combustion of fuel will be more and therefore the rate of production of steam will be more that way the damper is a regulator to control the rate of combustion of the fuel and thereby to control the rate of production of the steam inside the steam drum production of the steam depends on the amount of heat produced inside the furnace because only after absorbing the heat the water will be converted to steam 
So this is how the hot gases or combustion gases passes from furnace in a zigzag way all the way to the smoke box then to the chimney to be discharged to the atmosphere. Now let us understand about the fusible plug. This is the fusible plug which is located just above the furnace. Now if the water level inside the steam and water drum decreases, suppose the water level comes down to the bottom, then the material of the steam drum will be overheated. And before the, before any damage to the material of the steam drum or material of the boiler, this blue one which is the fusible plug actual material which is low melting point alloy, that alloy will melt before the damage can happen to the boiler material and if this alloy melts then there will be one opening and through this opening the water will be forced or spread over the furnace like this and thereby the combustion will be stopped or the fire inside the furnace will be extinguished. The boiler will be safe from any probable damage or accident or bursting. So this fusible plug is very essential which is one of the mountings of any boiler. Fusible plug is safety me measure against the low water level inside the boiler. Now let us see front cut section of this boiler. We know that the steam and water drum the upper part is occupied by the steam. So in this upper part there is one pipe that has many holes and this is called the anti-priming pipe. So steam enters inside the anti-priming pipe. The water particles may not enter inside the anti-priming pipe that we have discussed in the previous video. Dry steam or close to the dry steam will enter into this pipe and it will come down to the combustion chamber to the superheater. So let me repeat. Steam enters into the anti-priming pipe and from anti-priming pipe it will come down to the combustion chamber to the superheater where this dry or close to dry steam will be heated again by the combustion gases and therefore the steam will be converted to superheated steam. Let us see the superheater now. You can see steam from the anti-priming pipe is coming down to this superheater. So this superheater has again two headers. You can see this is one header and from this header the steam flows through a series of pipes which are superheater pipes. The pipes are exposed to the hot gases continuously inside the combustion chamber. Steam passes from this header to this header and by this time the steam is converted to superheated steam. So this red color represents superheated steam cell. So from this red colored header the steam which is superheated steam again goes up to the steam stock valve at the top of the steam drum and this way the wet or dry steam coming down to the superheater is converted to superheated steam and again it is exited from the boiler through this steam stop valve. This is the steam stop valve. Stop valves regulates the supply of superheated steam to the turbine or to the required place. Superheater should be placed within the combustion chamber so that the superheater tubes, the series of tubes are continuously exposed to hot gases and these tubes absorbs the heat from the hot gases and the steam inside these tubes will be converted to superheated steam. There is one mud box and blow off cock in Babcock and Wilcox boiler also. So this is the mud box. The box which collects the mud and sediments deposited inside the boiler and mud box must be located at the most bottom part of the boiler or bottom part of the water space. So this is the most bottom part. Whatever mud or sediments are deposited 
in the feed water those will be collected in the smart box and this one is blow off cock if the blow off cock is open then the muds or sediments deposited inside the mud box will be blown out of the boiler and this is done to stop the deposition of the muds or sediments inside the boiler now if i make all the parts transparent so all the parts like water tubes uptake header downtake header grate then superheater anti priming pipe everything can be seen by making this transparent you can visualize this thing the water up near the uptake headers are heated first and they are exposed to more heat and more temperature therefore the hot water or steam directly moves up to the steam drum and that evacuated space is occupied by the water coming from the downtake header in this direction and again the downtake header is occupied by the water from the coming down from the steam drum or water drum and this way the convective current is established so in this view also you can see where uh, the locations of the parts long pipe the short pipe feasible plug uptake header downtake header baffle plates the damper and all the parts inside the refractory wall so i think this is enough for today so thank you for watching